Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk to you about the athlete's microbiome. This is an overlooked area of uh, performance uh, that I think you're going to find very interesting. So let's take a look uh, first at your gastrointestinal uh, microbiome. The first thing you need to know is that it's huge. There are 100 tri trillion microbial cells in your gastrointestinal tract. Most of those are in your large intestine. While there are only 37 trillion human cells, so in fact there are more cells in your microbiome than there are uh, than there are human cells. Altering the composition of your microbiome uh, can improve training adaptions, adaptions to training. So let's take a look at uh, how you can improve your microbiome and how this is going to benefit your uh, training for sports. So what are the functions of the microbiome? It has a number of different functions, the first of which is to help you digest food. Uh, many of the fibers that we uh, eat in food are not uh, digestible with uh, enzymes found in the human genome. Uh, for this reason, we have a microbiome that provides us with around about 10% of our total daily calories uh, by digesting the foods, uh, particularly the fibers that we cannot. The microbiome is essential for regulating our immune system. Um, it supports our immune system um, by providing a number of small molecules which uh, uh, activate and keep us healthy. Uh, the microbiome metabolizes uh, vitamin precursors into vitamins that we can absorb. This is a crucial part of uh, microbiome for athletes. And microbiome protect us against invading bacterial organisms, the organisms that can cause disease. So we want to keep our microbiome, our friendly bacteria, happy, and they will protect us from invading organisms. So there is emerging evidence that changes in your microbiome can influence both your immune system, your ability to digest foods during racing, and during training. And all of these things are crucial uh, to improve your performance. So, first of all, some definitions. What do we need to know about your microbiome? First of all, uh, there is a, a term called probiotics, and probiotics are living microorganisms that have beneficial effects on human health. Probiotics are anti-inflammatory. There are many examples of probiotics. Uh, a few emerging examples that have been shown to have positive effects on the human immune system and human health uh, things like Lactobacillus rhamnosus, GG, um, Bifobacterium lactis, BB12. And there are a number of other ones which are really important. Um, various manufacturers sell probiotics, uh, some of which contain bacteria, uh, probiotic bacteria that have been proven to be active in the human system, and others which are purely speculative. So you want to be very cautious when you buy uh, probiotics to be sure that they're the ones that you're that are going to benefit your body. Prebiotics on the other hand are always a good idea. These are food ingredients that are beneficial to microorganisms and examples of these are different kinds of soluble and insoluble fibers. Both can be beneficial uh, to your microbiome. So we already know that we have more microbes in our body than cells in our body. That microbes make up around one and a half to two and a half kilograms or three to five pounds of weight in your body. Humans are born with almost no microorganisms. Uh, so early on you get uh, microorganisms from, from mom, particularly from mom, a little bit from dad as well. Uh, and the, the, one of the major roles, as we've discussed, is for the healthy microbes to fight off uh, invading organisms. And your microbiome affects your performance, um, and your performance affects your microbiome. So this is a two-way street. Um, if you're athletic and fit and healthy, um, this benefits, this produces metabolites that benefit your microbiome. And in return, your microbiome provides you with energy, it provides you with uh, substrates that boost your immune system, uh, provides you with substrates that enhance your overall training status. So this is a two-way street. You want to look after your microbiome and your microbiome will look after you. Occasionally you see athletes who crash. They have gastrointestinal problems the whole time. Uh, this can often be a situation where the athlete is not looking after their microbiome and um, as a result, 
their gastrointestinal tract is unhappy um, and it's not supporting uh, their training. So let's look at that uh, gut muscle axis. There's a gut muscle axis where the microbiome produces things like short-chain fatty acids and other small molecules that have positive effects on um, muscle activity. And muscle activity in turn has positive effects on the microbiome, which is in part by delivering nutrients and oxygen to your gastrointestinal tract and keeping it super fit and healthy. The other big way you can influence your microbiome is through your diet, and that is by ingesting microbiome, uh, microbiota accessible carbohydrates. These are uh, typically what we call uh, fibers. Um, there are also some less digestible proteins. Um, so having the most digestible proteins, uh, whilst that's a marketing, a thing you'll see in marketing all the time, may not be the most positive in terms of uh, positive effects on your microbiome. Uh, some of those protein proteins can be digested by your microbiome if they are of the less digestible protein variety. In addition, the microbiome uh, and the, the gut and the microbacteria in your gut uh, talk produce molecules that talk directly with your brain. Microbiome communicate with the brain and the brain communicates back. Um, stress can definitely influence the composition of your microbiome and reduce the complexity of your microbiome. We want a diverse, complex microbiome. Uh, eating probiotics uh, and eating pro prebiotic foods can definitely improve your microbiome, can influence your mood, influence your ability to think, and influence your ability to sleep. All of these things have uh, uh, big impacts on training. So what are we looking at through improving your microbiome? Improved sleep, improved immune system function. This is important because if you're sick, you can't train. You need to be well. It's been proven that looking after your microbiome, taking probiotics and prebiotic foods will improve the number of days with which you are uh, illness-free. Uh, this is protection from infection, keeps you training longer and harder, uh, produces key vitamins. Uh, athletes place a great deal of stress and strain on the vitamin, uh, the vitamins that are coming into their system. Uh, you want your microbiome uh, providing you with as many B group vitamins and vitamin K uh, as you can. B group vitamins are a really crucial part, pro providing B group vitamins, a really crucial part of what your microbiome can do for you. Um, reducing stress, having a healthy microbiome reduces stress and reducing stress provides a healthy microbiome. Um, and overall you can improve recovery from having a healthy microbiome. So let's take a look at probiotic, uh, probiotics and illness in athletes. This is looking at upper respiratory tract infections, this is a meta-analysis. You can see here from Hao et al, a Cochrane Review, 47% reduction in upper respiratory tract infections by looking after microbiome, taking probiotics. Um, here, lower number of illness days, that means more training days. And here, five to eight studies found athletes with um, reduced upper respiratory tract infections, fewer days of illness, um, and more days uh, able to train at their peak. So what are some uh, practical pieces of advice for probiotics. Um, taking a daily dose of a probiotic uh, is a good idea for many athletes uh, or taking a probiotic food like yogurt or kombucha or something like that. Very good um, ideas for athletes. You want to keep your probiotic levels as high as you can manage. The more pro probiotic foods you get into your uh, diet, the lower the inflammation. Um, probiotics definitely reduce inflammation. You would like to choose uh, probiotic species that are from the lactobacillus or bifobacterium uh, species. And you would like to be ingesting at least 10 to the 10 live bacteria. These are colony forming units. That's a lot of, uh, uh, of microbes. It is probably um, okay to take a single strain rather than take multi-strain probiotics. Um, although multi-strain probiotics have, um, may have different effects, it's, it's very difficult to know what, what each strain does. So at the moment, the advice is to take one particular strain and see if that agrees with your system. It's always best to 
train intuitively and understand whether you feel better with that particular uh, probiotic. Uh, the advice is to take the probiotic in the morning, take it with breakfast, um, and probiotics need to be taken for several weeks before you can expect to see any uh, positive health effects. So how are we going to feed our microbiome? Uh, we would like to feed our microbiome um, and that will em enable us to uh, improve it slowly. Um, the way to do this is to eat high fiber foods. Now, um, athletes can sometimes get into the trap of eating one single high fiber food and essentially feeding one or a few strains of um, uh, probiotic bacteria in their microbiome. And those uh, strains can end up dominating your system and squeezing out some other health, helpful uh, microbes. So, in fact, we want to eat a variety of fiber-containing foods so we can support a diverse um, and various uh, microbiome with a lot of different kinds of microorganisms that each can provide advantages um, during training. So what are these prebiotic fibers? We're looking here at microbiota accessible carbohydrates. Um, these, are, these are carbohydrates that can be metabolized by your microbiome and can, and can be fermented. Um, there are some, um, uh, some that you can find from animal products um, or indeed that are produced by the human body. Mucus is one of those things. Um, there are some that can be synthesized by other um, microbes, um, which is again a reason to have a very diverse um, microbial system. Um, and most importantly, fiber from plant material. These are the, this is the place that we're really going to focus on. We want to get uh, fibrous material from plants. Um, of course, while I'm suggesting that you have a high fiber diet during training, it is really important to reduce fiber intakes before a major competition, particularly if you're uh, doing a long uh, endurance event because you do not want to be taking uh, unwanted bathroom breaks um, during your, during your uh, event. So let's summarize strategies to improve your microbiome. First, it's an excellent idea to eat a high fiber diet. Uh, that diet should consist of fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, and also uh, whole grains wherever possible. Athletes need to eat uh, probiotic foods like yogurt or kimchi or sauerkraut or sourdough or kombucha. The more probiotic foods you can get into your diet, the more anti-inflammatory effects they can have on your system. And that's really important to keep inflammation down post-training uh, when your muscles are sore and they're most inflamed. Avoid the use of antibiotics. Athletes um, from time to time will have to take antibiotics to treat um, an infection. Uh, when that happens, it will damage your microbiome. And you will need to back off your training, rebuild your microbiome through eating probiotic um, foods, uh, and, and then get back to full training afterwards. In terms of high fiber diet, it's essential to eat a variety of high fiber foods. Uh, by eating a variety of high fiber foods and swapping uh, your fruits and vegetables and seeds and nuts and changing them each day um, or throughout the week, uh, that supports a wide variety of microorganisms and that wide variety of microorganisms will support a diverse microbiome and that diverse microbiome can have all of the functions that you need as an athlete. Keep inflammation down, uh, keep those BV group vitamins are high, keep that vitamin K high, uh, provide you energy, provide small chain fatty acids to your muscles to improve muscular development, uh, small chain fatty acids signaling to your brain to um, decrease stress. All of these things you'll get from a variety of uh, microorganisms by eating a variety of high fiber foods. And last but not least, you want to avoid eating uh, simple sugars and uh, simple saturated fats. Both of these have been shown to harm your microbiome. Um, eating added sugars uh, will feed the dominant strains um, in your microbiome and they will outcompete the smaller, less, um, less frequent strains. Added sugars will also reduce the amount of uh, probiotic prebiotic fiber that you have in your diet and saturated fats will do the same thing. So reduce added sugars and saturated fats. These are damaging to your microbiome.